Hey, I'm Thomas Allen with InFisherman. Today, I'm gonna show you my underwear. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna show you how I stay warm, the different layers that I wear, from generally cold conditions to extremely Arctic type conditions. I think over the years I've developed a pretty effective way to stay warm in the coldest of conditions. And if what I have doesn't keep me warm, I'm gonna stay at home. Let's start with the base layer. I'm gonna break it down into several categories for you. Base layers, mid layers, outer layers, and footwear. Okay, so let's start with base layers here. Uh, I, this is long underwear, and this is kind of a spandex type material. It's stretchy, it's skin tight, and I wanna go with the tightest layers against the skin as possible. That's your first layer. And depending on how cold it is, I will add or remove layers as we go down the line. One of the most important things here, and I'm gonna say this throughout, is you need to keep your ankles, your wrists, and your neck warm, and that's gonna help you stay warm. So get a thin pair of wool socks, and these are pretty stretchy. They're not super easy to get on. You want them tight, but not so tight that it cuts off your circulation. So on the bottom half, on my legs and waist, I'm gonna start with a tighter layer, thin pair of wool socks, and I'm gonna upgrade from there, again, with another pair of wool socks, but I'm gonna go with a more thermal or more highly engineered level of fabric type long underwear. So this is layer number two, and I'm gonna reiterate again that you wanna tuck your long johns into your socks based on the layers and as you go out from there continue to tuck those in if they're too tight if there's bunched up areas smooth them out because those clumps or those rolls will actually push against the wall of your boot or your footwear and that could eventually make your toes cold in arctic conditions if it's very cold and i'm talking in that single digit to negative degree if i'm going to go ice fishing i'm going to probably grab a set of polypropylene this is like your military issue this is the furthest outer base layer okay so I might have three pairs of base layers on if it's super duper cold. And on top of that, I suggest a heavy duty pair of cotton socks. Cotton is not always a great idea, especially against your skin, but cotton is a great insulator. So once you have one or two pairs of good quality wool, sweat, water wicking type socks, cover those final layers with a pair of cotton socks. That's about the only time you're gonna hear me say that. So that's your base layer for your waist and your legs. Let's move on to your torso. I'm gonna start against my skin. Uh, this is like your workout type, spandex type clothing. Very form fitting, I might add. Doesn't look so good on me, but it's warm. That is gonna go against my skin. If I'm gonna add a layer to that, I'm gonna go with another, a little bit more of a technologically based type fabric that's got some special features. This happens to be from Cabela's. This is a warm suit. And then from there, I'm gonna add what I would start to call mid layers. Generally, it's gonna be a a shirt kind of like this, it's, it's pretty thin, but it's, it's, uh, uh, it tucks in, it's good and long, it's got long sleeves. And I'll tell you, when it comes to really cold conditions, having thumb loopholes is very important. It keeps your wrists warm. Again, we'll continue to talk about that. This is just kind of a pullover with a three-quarter zip. Again, that's going to go on top of my base layers. So I'm done with the base layers, now we're adding middle layers. After that, if it's real windy or if it's very cold, this is a louder material, you can hear that, but it breaks the wind. That's very important. You need to have something that's gonna stop the wind from cutting through you because that's when you start to get cold. Again, a three quarter zip pullover, and this also happens to have the thumb holes, another thing I, I really believe in. So now we're, we're at the mid layer of long underwear and we're done with that. We're gonna finish with the mid layers uh, that you would put on top of all that stuff. I firmly believe, let's start with the pants, a good pair of jeans is an excellent insulator. It's a harder material. It doesn't breathe uh, as much as some of your base layers, so that's a good outer protective layer. Another type pant that I would certainly recommend, jogging pants, and we all know I don't use these to jog in, but they're nice and comfy and they generally will break the wind. So that might be a layer that I would put on the outside of my base layers. Again, if it's super cold, we'll put the jeans on and then maybe the exercise or swishy pants as we call them in my house, even on the outside of my jeans. You're starting to get pretty bulked up at this point, but depending on the temperature you're dealing with, you can't go too much. On top of my torso, you can't go wrong with a hoodie. And I love, uh, it's one of my favorite items of clothing for all four seasons, but a good durable hoodie. You wanna have the hood sticking up out of your, your clothes to help break the wind, and you definitely don't want cold air going down into your, into your clothes. And then this is when we're in extreme Arctic temperatures, and I'm talking negative degrees if you're gonna be outside. Um, very seldom, I'd say two or three times a year, I'll wear these layers. 
These layers kind of act as a fur and they're super heavy duty. And when I wear these, I don't get cold. It doesn't matter what temperature it is, but I will literally put these on the outside of every base layer, maybe on the outside of my mid layers as kind of an outer extra air, uh, layer of protection. These things are mega warm. And another thing, they have thumb holes right there. And I love the, the legs, they have these little stirrups, so they kind of will stay in place no matter where they're at. Again, you're getting pretty bulked up at this point, but that is when you're going to need it. And if you're planning on walking a lot, running and gunning, um, doing a lot of movement, you're going to want to consider down dressing your layers to accommodate that. If you're going to be sitting on a bucket over a hole and it's negative degrees, I might suggest staying at home, but if you're going to go out and take advantage of a hot bite, you're going to want to bulk up. Just don't plan on moving a lot. The more you move when you're wearing a lot like this is going to make you warmer. So that's what I wear underneath my snow gear or my ice gear. Now let's talk about ice fishing gear. These are extremely over-engineered suits. They, they look nice. They've got good colors. There's a, a fashion trend to, to adhere to. And in my family, I make it very clear these are not to go sledding in, okay? These are not playing in the snow clothes. These are ice fishing only clothes um, because they're very important to keep you out on the ice. You have fun if you're out there and catching fish. And only way you're gonna be able to find biting fish and stay on biting fish is to endure the elements. So get a good quality ice fishing suit. And I'm gonna show you a few that I really love. Uh, Clam makes a good one. Strike Master makes a good one. Frabill makes a good one. And there are actually other brands out there to consider as well. I have a Cabela's suit. These are ones I have on hand. I believe in them. A couple things I wanna show you that are critical about these. Let's start with this one. On the jacket, you've got side pockets, insulated side pockets. You've got a spot for a cell phone or any other thing you're gonna need. But most importantly, it zips all the way up to the top and it's a long suit. And so a, a tall man is gonna have that suit hang below their belt line. I think that's important. Let's open that up quick. This one happens to have magnets in this, uh, this seam here so that that closes up with magnets. I think that's a great idea. This has an inner liner that you can take the liner out, wear it by itself. If, if you don't feel like you need it that day, but you want the outer jacket, you can do that. Lots of places to, to tighten it so that it stays comfortable. Lots of pockets, and it's, it's relatively heavy. When it comes to the bibs, I love to have quality knee pads. You're spending a lot of time on your knees, jigging, working to get those fish to come up. And, and a lot of times you have to do that for long periods of time before you recognize where they're at or how they're feeding. So having good knee pads is important. These are waterproof, they're double insulated, and they have lots of ways to fasten around your boots. Uh, and I really think that's important. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You want to make sure that these cover the tops of your boots. Remember I said ankles, wrists, and your neck. It's really important to keep that in mind. So anyway, those are things to look for. There are a lot of great suits on the market. I don't think you can go wrong. They're not cheap, but if you want to stay on the ice and you want to catch fish, you need to be comfortable. So in regards to base layers, mid layers, and outer layers, I think we've pretty well covered that. But the next thing we're going to do real quickly is talk about boots. All right, let's talk about footwear. Crocs, not a good idea on the ice or when it's cold out. I have a selection of boots that I wear throughout the year. The only thing I don't have, and that's for the sake of this discussion, is I do have a pair of leather hunting boots that I will wear in the early fall. Um, generally, they don't have a whole lot of insulation and they're really more for a cooler morning. And as the day warms up, I'll keep them on. If, however, I'm dealing within that 40 degree, 50 degree range, I'll start with some insulated knee boots, rubber boots. Uh, I, I'm gonna, every boot I talk about has waterproof attributes. You have to have waterproof boots, footwear, no matter what kind of fishing you're doing. So these are kind of your lighter, uh, uh, not as highly insulated. I don't know how much the, the insulation they have, but it's the kind of thing you're going to get cold when it freezes. And then I'll move up to something a little bit thicker, a little bulkier. Uh, it's going to have insulation all the way up to the, the middle of the shin. It's going to be great for, uh, you know, in that 30 degree, 35 degree range. And then when things start to get really cold, that's when I move up to a heavy duty insulated boot. And, and these will I'll, I'll wear for a short period of time. These are insulated uh, to the thousand gram, 2,000 grams to insulate. These are lacrosse burleys. Uh, but what I've found is that in super cold conditions, the rubber will get real hard and frozen. It'll be pretty uncomfortable. So when I get to extreme cold in that, we'll just say that 25 down to zero, I'm gonna leave the rubber boots at home and I'm gonna start going with sorrel type 
or, or uh, Ice King type boots. These are lacrosse boots, for example. These are the Ice Kings. Uh, and this is one of the warmest boots I've been able to find. I've been through a bunch, firmly believe in these. And a couple examples here is when you're drilling holes, that water is going to come up and get onto your boots. And it doesn't stop where the rubber stops and it meets the leather. Like a lot of time that overflow is gonna go up to, to your ankle and, and even into your lower shin. Uh, and that's when you want your bibs to be securely fastened around your ankles. When we're talking cold conditions, I wanna have a boot that has a removable liner, just like that. If I have the option to put in heat war hand warmers or foot warmers, I can do that. But again, get something that is a little bit bigger than your regular size. I'm an 11, I buy size 12 boots so that I can put up to three pairs of socks in there. So when you're buying uh, a quality pair of boots for extreme cold, make sure you've got enough room to put three pairs of socks in there. I know it sounds extreme, but if you want to stay warm, you got to make those kinds of decisions. So there you have for footwear. Now we're going to talk a little bit about gloves and hats. The only thing that will ruin an ice fishing trip or a hunting trip faster than cold toes is cold fingers. Here are a couple things that I use to keep my fingers warm. There's a lot of great options out there these days, and these are just a few to pick from. I do like to start with these rubber grippy type gloves. They're real handy when it's not super cold or if I need to have some level of dexterity. Um, as the day goes on, I will put on a heavier, uh, more insulated type glove. I, I don't have any problem with leather in this case, um, but these aren't going to cut it when it's super duper cold. From there, I'll upgrade to really a glove made for ice fishing. These happen to be from Frayville, but you'll notice these come well up over your wrist. And it's super important that you can block those areas where heat will disappear, where you'll lose heat. And I've said it before, your ankles, your waist, your neck, your wrists, those are all areas that you lose heat. So I like these gloves for being extra long. I know that Frayville also makes a set of mittens that are in this profile, so that's a good way to go. Speaking of mittens, when it's real cold, get a good pair of mittens. These are a leather and they're pretty heavily insulated. Mittens are very important because your fingers are together, your skin's touching itself, you're creating heat inside those mittens and it's maintaining itself. So start with the thin gloves, work your way up. It's important to have all different types. Now let's talk about keeping your neck and your head warm. You lose the most heat out of your head, but you also lose a lot around your neck. Having a neck gaiter, super duper important. You wanna have that bunched up around there below your chin. Where your hoodie comes out, you want that to be right underneath that edge. So get a good neck gaiter that's not gonna itch you and drive you crazy and get all those fuzzles on your face, but just keep you warm, that's important. And when it comes to hats, I'll be honest with you, I would avoid skull caps. Those short little hats that barely cover your ears, they may look good, they may be a cool style, but I'm more about function over fashion. So I like to get these longer, taller hats, especially something with my Iowa Hawkeyes logo on there. Um, and I like the little, little snowball-y thing on top because that's kind of that kind of fits what you're doing so anyways get a longer bulkier hat and they make hats thicker with double layers of insulation like this uh, the heavy knit is very warm and uh, keep in mind you might want to take a couple because if you're out drilling a bunch of holes and you sweat out your hat and it gets wet it's gonna get cold and it's gonna make you cold so if you sweat out one hat go grab another one once you sit down on the ice house so think about all that today from base layers to mid layers to outer layers to footwear to gloves and hats. There's a lot of things you can do to stay warm, but it's most important that you determine what layers you add or subtract based on the temperature and how warm of a person you are. Everybody's different. I know my kids have to wear a little bit more than I might. Don't skimp on your base layers. Don't skimp, get quality gloves, get quality boots, and spend the money on a good ice suit because that's what's gonna keep you out there longer. And the longer you stay out there, the more fish you're gonna catch.